In recent times, the need for Nigeria economy to experience geometric growth, most especially by leveraging on potentials in critical sectors like agriculture, technology and all other sectors has been of concern to many Nigerians. And to achieve this, Redeemer's Men Fellowship Lagos is at the vanguard of hosting a summit tagged Inspiration Conference 2020. The conference slated for January the 25th is expected to have in attendance critical stakeholders in agri sector, entertainment, technology, energy, SME, among others. And to shed light on this, we are joined by Pastor Charles Pande, uh, who is the regional pastor of RCCG Region 11 and also the head of Blessed Family. Uh, he, he's also the coordinator of Redeemer's Men's Fellowship Lagos, and they are the organizers of this conference. It's good to have you here, Pastor. Thank you very much. Now, welcome. Well, let's begin by asking you this uh, Galvanize for Geometric uh, Growth uh, Inspiration Conference. What is it about? Yes, basically, um, we are at the beginning of a new year. We are at the beginning of a new decade. And um, everybody understands that things are about to change. And it can only change for better or for worse, and we expect it to be for better. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do is really to get key players in the economy of Nigeria to come together to be able to put forth all that they are thinking and then how uh, the ordinary people mm -hmm. can get galvanized, especially the men uh, in Lagos, we want to be able to provide a platform where they can have good understanding of what the issues and the thinking are, and then be able to see how it fits into what they are doing and how they can also cash into the opportunities. Mm -hmm. I must say there. a noble cause there, but I'm also interested to know why the theme uh, governance for geometric growth? Yes, um, it's on two parts. We're expecting, like you see the word, geometric. So we're expecting our people and all those who will be part of this conference mm -hmm. to grow. And it's not just um, a small growth. It's a, new, it's a totally new decade. So we're expecting what we like to call geometric growth mm -hmm. for them. And uh, also, if they are growing, then we're also hoping for geometric growth for Nigeria. So basically, we're trying to galvanize our people mm -hmm. to be able to be part of that kind of growth. What do they need to do? Beginning with think, hearing the thinking of the policymakers, and then also those who are supposed to be supportive of the growth, the, the various people in charge of the various engines that will help that growth. And the people need to understand and tap into it. We mm -hmm. hope that this conference will be like a marketplace for them to share ideas and see how this will help. And it's good that it's happening in January, the beginning of the yeah. year. Yeah. So uh, that's what had been in our minds. That's how this came about. All right. It's important that you mentioned growth there. Yes. You talked about Nigeria. Now, you also know that the world poverty clock has put Nigeria as the uh, poverty capital of the world, which unfortunately also implies that there is poverty in the land. Yes. Now, uh, is there a way that this conference, which we know your key focus, uh, you have focus on entertainment, on agri, different sectors, is there a way that this, this conference will be addressing this fundamental yes, issue? Yes, basically. When, when you talk of um, poverty, um, poverty in Nigeria to some of us is actually structural. It's simply mm. that people have not been positioned to take, uh, take, care of, uh, take in the opportunities that are available, either for lack of knowledge mm. or lack of capacity. So we are trying to see how we can put both together, knowledge of what we need, to, what, what, what the policymakers are thinking, knowledge of, of what they are doing, knowledge of the opportunities, that's why you have African Development Bank, Bank of Industry, and all sorts. Even uh, the from vice the president is representing the total government. And there are all sorts of great people. Now, on the other side, I haven't got the knowledge. We also need to have an understanding of what the challenges and the problems are. That's why, um, beyond these key people, we are going to have seminar sessions where 
people who are well versed in the key areas we are looking at. Agric, she know is very key. We are thinking of SME, okay. We are thinking of ICT. We are thinking of energy. We are thinking of um, entertainment. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are, in our view, key sectors for, for growth, okay, or growth drivers. So we are believing that if you put uh, the people to release this to the to our people and all those who will be listening to this all over Nigeria and in all parts of the world, or Nigerians at every level, mm -hmm. if we can provide the platform for this kind of uh, cross-fertilization of ideas, then we are helping that. There'll be timing for them to ask questions. Okay. Uh, because there are things that um, are not properly communicated or those to which it's communicated do not understand. So for us, this is the big thing. And mm -hmm. um, we just think it's going to really, really help to move a lot of people out of the poverty. For the SME, for example, once you can get people to be able to do the small and medium in the, um, enterprises to begin to to, to grow, see where they can get financing, mm -hmm. uh, have the knowledge of, of best practices and all that. Okay, we are talking a big uh, aspect of is entertainment. That's correct. Uh, so many don't know, some who are in it don't know the opportunities that are there. So that's where we are going. All right, having yeah. gone through the list of your panelists yes. and uh, you know uh, speakers, you've actually brought the best of minds in right. this uh, sure. conference. And indeed, it's going to be a gift that you're giving yeah. to Nigerians and by extension, Africa and yeah. the world by this conference. Now, uh, we've seen that you've drawn people from the presidency, from the bank of industry, from trade and investment, yes. from even budgets. Yes. What should we expect from these people? Because they are key uh, policy makers well, also. Okay, so presidency, of course, mm -hmm. so that's uh, the, the biggest total, office. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> then the budget office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you see, the Nigerian budget is just out again. We really, really need to now have them come to let us know mm -hmm. what is the drive for this budget, what they are expecting this budget, how it will be affecting the people. Because sometimes we just see on television, we see, and we don't really have the ordinary people connect to it. That's right. This is one possibility for that. Of course, where well, you didn't also mention, for example, the, 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 the key development banks, mm. BOI, Bank of Industry, and then bringing in um, Dr. Additional, who is the president of um, the African Development Bank. Now, he has all it takes. I mean, they are the key drivers of the economy in That's Africa. Right. And he had also been a key person in agri, which we really think is uh, one of the key sectors that will drive this economy. Mm -hmm. So if you have those kind of people in a situation where they can share their thoughts and have not just speak as policy makers, but have people get to ask them questions mm -hmm. and um, be able to have the same people deal with those who are supposed to provide the capital because this the issue of finance has become a major issue. Mm -hmm. How does it trickle down to the real people so that production can be done? All right, still, yeah. still on the uh, panelists and the speakers, I also noticed that you have uh, uh, Matthew Kuka, who is the bishop, Very Catholic good. bishop of Sokoto. Mm -hmm. So uh, my question is, are we seeing a synergy now between you know, <laughs> yes. other churches, some form of ecumenism? Uh, yeah, yeah a good way. of course. And of course, what we are doing is not really just one church based because I mean, um, uh, we expect all peoples, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody knows that in terms of being able to articulate the thinking uh, of people, mm -hmm. and because of the connect with the other people and the church, um, Reverend Kuka. Matthew Kuka is um, quite vocal. Yes, very. And then he's also been very involved with all the things that have affected governments and the people within the years. Mm -hmm. So we really think that um, uh, he's coming. It's a big blessing. It's a big blessing. 
And then it also makes people not to see it purely as well because the organizers are Redeemed Christian mm -hmm. Church of God. It's not just Redeemed Christian where I wanted to touch society. It's a conference that this is our first edition. Okay. We believe that once it begins to achieve its purpose, uh, shortly every year it will be annual conference. Mm -hmm. And it's not just also a conference of justice. We have plans for uh, people to be able to get the supports within the course of the year. So there will be a lot of attempt at getting their data, um, linking them to, to those who can follow up mm -hmm. them. Yeah. All right, Pastor, we don't get to see uh, religious leaders like you all the time. So when, <laughs> when we see you, we try to milk oh, everything humanly yeah, possible okay. and ask all our questions. Yeah. Now, let's talk about Nigeria and faith, right? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> people have said we in Nigeria, if you move around, it's one of the places where you see churches almost in every street, right? But again, we've been criticized as a people who are very religious, but not uh, quite spiritual. Do you agree with this school of thought? Um, you'll always, you, you, you naturally think that um, I don't agree. And not only do I not agree, I am one of those who are vehemently opposed to that thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, because um, in every aspect of life, you should always ask if this wasn't there where would we be in measuring impact? Mm -hmm. Now, um, and then a lot of the people who speak uh, do it from a position of ignorance because um, sometimes the religion, the impact of faith on the people is not usually advertised. Most times what they just see is the negatives or one bad spot. They are not uh, looking at real people that their lives are transformed. Mm. The number of ordinary people we affect young people who ordinarily were on, uh, on, the, on the lane to, to, to more, 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 more than you see. Look, if there were going to be 1,000 people who are going to do the same wrong thing, Mm -hmm. and you are able to, by your activity, remove 200. Now, and somebody says, sorry, you had no impact because there is an 800, 800 left. and they focus on those. It is not right. We are not claiming we have done everything. That's one. Number two, again, sometimes in the criticisms, they give us jobs that are not meant to be ours alone. Mm. Okay. Development of human beings starts from the home. When you have dysfunctional homes, the problem has started. The failure of parental, um, the parents not doing things because either they are running up and down to make ends meet because there has been a dysfunctional economy whereby, mm -hmm. you know, and all that. So then you move from there to the schools. Okay, the schools, these are the areas where people are molded. Okay, so there's a role there. If the school systems have broken down, there's going to be a problem. Then you talk of our cultural orientation, which is part of what is in conflict with what the church is bringing. If you have a culture, and culture, in our view, on my view, is the way we do things here. That's the way we think. Oh, if my culture says that um, I'm celebrating wealth any how it comes, okay, and uh, the values are saying, look, it is celebrated. Mm -hmm. Now, it means that people generally will be tuned to that. So you are coming to church. The church is laying you this and you walk out. You meet some other guy who never came to church, who somehow did a crime. And then it's being celebrated by the same people who are sitting there and say, oh, it's a bad country. And then so this guy is already in a confusion. Mm -hmm. Should he stick to this, our hard ways? 
or should he listen? So you find that even though he now comes to church, the pressure of the values. That's why people keep saying, oh, the, um, the, the, the Western countries and all that, they are not as religious as you are saying. But there are values that have been built into those systems, backed by the laws which are implemented. We are not implementers of laws. If the institutions that should be so 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 um, without running away from responsibility, because we have our role, and uh, nobody is claiming perfection, but I also think it's a bit unfair when people transfer their own. Oh, you didn't do your bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it gives you it's it's popular because we don't come talking uh, for the media and everybody. Oh, the pastors. Oh, the pastors, oh, they are just uh, great people who are wearing nice suits. They come to take the poor people's money. Yeah, that's exactly pastor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, it. That's, that's what it was. They are there to, now, nobody remembers. Take for a lot, a lot of us. I came here from, now, most of the people, are, we're all colleagues, though. No, that. For whatever reason, one is giving um, the assignment to now pastor. Mm -hmm. Does not now detract and change everything about the person you had been, such that suddenly you've turned to a parasite who is just feeding on poor people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not what it should be. It's, well, that's the way they, you know, that's the narrative mm -hmm. that is thrown out in the media. And this is what creates all this, oh, we are a country of very religious people. And then, you know, religion has had a very positive impact on this nation. If it had not been for the, this, the uh, being religious, let's assume, okay, in addition to, we were not religious. Mm -hmm. Who then we will have been in a state of total anarchy. That's my opposition. Yeah, thank you so very much. Pastor, we would like to keep you, but we are pressed for time, unfortunately. Yeah, so we want you. to say thank you for coming. Yes, please. Um, for your time. Yes, go. I didn't need to beg you that. Please, everybody should be part of this conference. Okay. Believe you, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the best thing that should happen. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we've been speaking with Pastor Charles Pande, and if you didn't hear from the beginning, this conference is going to take place on the 25th of January here in Lagos. Saturday. On Saturday.